I'm Bert Collins. And I'm Nina Zakarenko. And this is five things that you didn't know that Python could do. That's right. Here's a freebie. Did you know that Python is 28 years old? Really? Did you yeah. know that I'm 28 years old? That's a fat lie. <laughs> Thing number one, Python empowers scientists. In Antarctica called Concordia Station, and the scientists there use Python for a lot of their analysis, graphing, data, co data collection. They used it for a cool experiment where they drilled down two miles into the earth to analyze air that's trapped under the ice from In a million years. I'm Bert Collins. And I'm Nina Zakarenko. And this is five things that you didn't know that Python. Python is 28 years old. Really? Did you yeah. know that I'm 28 years old? That's a fat lie. <laughs> Thing number one, Python empowers scientists. Um, how does that work? There's a scientific base in Antarctica called Concordia Station, and the scientists there use Python for a lot of their analysis data collection. They used it for a cool experiment where they drilled down two miles into the earth to analyze air that's trapped under the ice from the a million ground. years ago. Yeah. You think they would go up to get air, but no, you have to go down to get down. air apparently. Yeah. The, really old found. air. Really old air. That's what you need. <laughs> so what else can you do with, uh, how else does it empower scientists? Yeah, so scientists use a, a ton of the available AI and ML tools in Python. There's SciPy, Pandas, PyTorch, lots of other things. And then on Azure, you can use hosted Jupyter notebooks. They're called Azure notebooks, and they're really cool. Shameless plug. Yeah. Uh, I know a couple things about Python. Did you know that? It's not true. It's true. Uh, also, other facts about Python, it's the second fastest land animal. 
that is also not true. It says so right here. Those it's are the, Burke the, facts, it's not the, real facts. It's on the internet, so it's true. <laughs> Thing number two, Python is used to create a lot of video games and art that you probably use or have seen before. Yeah, so I think the most famous example here is EVE Online. It's a massive multiplayer game with, at some point they had you know 100,000 users, or players rather, and um, they use a variant of Python called Stackless Python, and that allowed them to iterate on their game very quickly. Uh, there's also a potato game built with Python? Yeah, so there's a game called Super Potato Bra, and you can find that, I know, you can find that on Steam. So it's a game that was written entirely in Python, and the premise of it, it's, it's a platformer. So you're, you're a baked potato, and you're trying to save all of your vegetable friends from an evil ladle that wants to kidnap them and turn them into soup. Sounds so exciting. I'm trying to think of a good potato joke here, but I don't, I, I don't really have one. Potato jokes have to come naturally, you know? Yeah. You, you can't rust it. <laughs> thing number three, uh, you can do home automation with Python. So there's a lot of home automation things. I use the Amazon Echo. Yeah. What can you do with Python? So there is a Python package called Home Assistant, and it's a really popular home automation library. And you can use that to make a home automation system that focuses on security and privacy first. Ah. Important. Are you saying the, uh, that me talking to my home assistant isn't private? I, t I tell Alexa <laughs> all my darkest secrets. I, oh. I just sit and talk to it. Oh, boy. It's not good. Thing number four, scaling. Uh, Python scales, and how do we know that? Uh, well, Instagram has, it runs Django, which is a Python web framework, and Instagram has one billion users. Yeah. There's a few people that use Instagram. Yeah. I am not one of them, by the way, but I've heard of it. Oh, there's a pug playing oh, with a, a football. Oh, it's a puppy. Oh, yeah, there's another one. I follow a lot of pug accounts. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that pug has its own pug, like that, a, like a you pet pug. Try, you should, that's really it's a cute. Pug. That pug has a pug. I've heard of it before. Yeah. All the kids are using it. Also, there's Reddit and... Yeah, Reddit and Quora are Quora. both yeah. Yeah, Python-based. Okay. Dropbox is also Python-based. Uh, Guido Van Rossum, Python's creator, has worked there for a few years now. And then read the docs, write the docs. Everybody loves docs. That's a, a very popular Python package that is hosted on Azure. Do you know there's only two kinds of documentation? What are they? It's the kind people don't, the kind they complain about. Thing number five, uh, hardware. You can run Python on hardware. That's right. That'd be like hammers. Yeah. It's a weird place yeah, to put nails. Python. Yeah, nails. Weird, weird yeah, weird stuff. Uh, so there's two subsets of Python called uh, MicroPython and CircuitPython. Okay. And then uh, there's, there are lots of hardware platforms out there. My favorites come from Adafruit. So this right here is a Circuit Playground Express. This runs Python, and uh, it, it's got a lot of stuff on it. It's got LEDs, it's got light sensors, temperature sensors, button switches, kind of everything that you need to get started with a hardware project without having a solder. Nice. Didn't yeah. you say, were you telling me the BBC gave something like this to every child? Yeah. So the BBC gave away something called a, a micro bit that runs MicroPython to every child of a certain age in the UK. So the, the fun thing about this particular device is if you don't know Python and maybe you don't know how to program, there's something out there called Microsoft Make Code. Oh, okay. Yeah, that allows you to program this uh, with just a drag and drop interface. Oh, nice, and how much do those go for? I wanna say this is 30 or 35 bucks. And I'm Nina Zakarenko. And that's five things that you didn't know that Python could do. I started the intro and then forgot about the countdown. Now it's start all over again. But anyways, welcome. Good afternoon to you. Oh, whoops, better mute YouTube over here. Uh, good afternoon or good evening to you if you're in my time zone. Um, good morning if you are in Australia. I think it's morning there. What is What time is it in the UK? It's like uh, middle of the night, something like that. So wherever you are, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we've got a great stream for you today. Uh, we have Damian Brady from GitHub is here. We'll talk to him in just a minute, and he's going to show us some cool GitHub things. Uh, before we do that, just a few quick reminders. 
YouTube. If you're not already on YouTube, following us there, like, subscribe, smash that button. I think that's what I'm supposed to say. Smash it. TikTok.com slash VS Code. Come hang out with us there. We'd love to see you there. Uh, if you've been to our streams before, you're tired of hearing about that. So let's get started. Let me go ahead and welcome on Damian Brady. Damian Brady from GitHub here to talk about all things GitHub. What's up? And welcome, Damian. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, what's up? I, it, I'm in Australia, so it's 9 a.m. for me, which is nice. Oh, that's not so bad. Yeah, it's great. That's an acceptable hour. It's 6 p.m. here. Uh, what about you, chat? Where are you at? What time? What's your time zone? I think uh, Good morning. I think you're saying... Uh, and oh, that's right. Uh, so today, Cloud Advocacy. That's right. I remember those were rough days. They were. <laughs> so I apologize for everything that happened. Um, so yeah, I, I always had code in GitHub. I like a lot of code in GitHub, and I use VS Code. I had been using VS Code for ages, and I kind of just not delved too much in. Like GitHub was basically just where I kept where I kept the code. So out of the box, VS Code has really good Git support, obviously. So I figured um, we'd start there and then I'd show you some of the extensions and things that you can add to VS Code to make your GitHub workflow you know, much, much better if you're using just more than you know your basic kind of Git, Git workflow. Yeah, I'd love to see it, man. We've got uh, people here from, uh, let's, let's see, it's 1 a.m. in Zambia, 7 p.m. in Ohio. All right, let's get right into it. Awesome, okay, so here's my project. Um, I did a great little .NET new, um, NBC or or web page or something like that. I can't even remember. It doesn't really matter. Um, with this GitHub example, you can follow on along if you want. Um, so this is really just the code that I'm, I'm using, and I'm in GitHub. I don't have any extensions like set up. I've got some installed, but they're disabled. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of look at the workflow that you would normally get, like just out of the box. So here's my code. You can see this is cool. Right down here, we've got this main. I don't know whether that zooming's working properly. Let me know. Um, that that main branch that we're on at the moment is kind of where we're living. Um, and you can see the project I'm in and so on. So right from the start, you can see, you know, I'm, I'm able to edit my code. If I go to GitHub and go to issues, I've got a bunch of work that I want to do. So I'm tracking my work in issues in GitHub. Um, we've got an update to the privacy policy. We'll skip that in a sec. We've got to create a welcome page, which I've, I've um, I'm going to look at that one now. So that is item number one. So that is uh, issue ID one. So what I can do is, what was that issue again? It was welcome page. Okay, so my index, um, I'm basically just gonna change my model here. It doesn't really matter what I put in here. So um, because it doesn't matter, I'm actually just gonna use Copilot um, and see if Copilot can give me something nice. I think some solutions. Hey, that's a good one. All right, this is your homepage. I've uh, got a couple of extra divs in there. Excellent. Um, so we've got this change. Uh, and because it's Git, right, right from out of the box, we've got, you know, we can make that change. I can add that change. I can put my commit message. Now, the way that GitHub kind of links these things together, I can say, you know, fixes number one, which is great. Um, I don't really get any prompts about what one is. I just need to kind of know. So I can push that. Um, normally I do that in a pull request and we'll, we'll get to that. Um, if I was going to do a pull request, I could change my branch first and, and create a new branch and then create that pull request and then go back into GitHub. Sorry, create that branch, go back into GitHub and then, um, you know, go into pull request. And you can see like even that integration is pretty good. It's moved that issue to closed. And you can see you get that kind of integration where you can see GitHub example automation moved from done to in progress. So this was a project that I set up for these issues as well. So it's seen that I've got a fixed and it's moved it to um, done from in progress. So just by using some of the stuff in GitHub and just the native Git stuff um, in VS Code, I kind of, you can see that's moved across. So we've got this create welcome page that's moved across with this link pull request from when I was testing before. Um, and it's linked to that, that change as well. So yeah, out of the box, you can do a lot of stuff. But like I mentioned, um, if I wanted to create a new branch in a pull request, I can do some of that here, but I have to do some of it back over in GitHub. So what I really want is kind of a workflow that lets me do all of this without leaving Visual Studio Code. So the first extension that I would recommend everybody using GitHub installs is the GitHub pull requests and issues. 
Now I've already installed this. Um, I'm just going to enable it. Um, see that it's work in progress, obviously. There's a failed pipeline to build it. And it lets you do a bunch of things. I'm going to focus on a couple of the ones that I kind of mentioned before. The first thing I'm going to show you is that I, I mentioned pull requests before. You had to jump back into GitHub to do your pull request. That's added another button right here to the um, to the Git screen or the Git tab in VS Code to create a pull request right from here. So that's really handy. Like right out of the box, we can do that um, rather than having to go back into Visual Studio. But to really demonstrate, we've got this new icon over here, and you can see. Let's just ignore that for the moment. We can see the issues that I've got assigned to me right now. So it gives me a little bit of information. I'm going to work on this one, making that nav bar dark. I can click on the link to open the issue directly in GitHub. So I get that deep link right into what the issue is from Visual Studio Code. Um, but I also can do this. And so this little arrow is for starting work and checking out a topic branch. So basically, it combines a bunch of things. It will create a branch for this issue, name it appropriately, and kind of it means that I'm working on that issue right now, and I can do that right from here. Um, so I can also, oh, I thought I could click on that issue or double click on that issue, maybe not. All right, so let's do that. You can see right away down here, we've changed branches. So it's created a new branch for me called issue two. Um, and it says, look, I'm linked to this issue number two. Um, so you know, I'm doing that work now. Um, if I click on that, that issue number two, I've got a bunch of options that Visual Studio has given me in the in the command um, command palette, command bar, um, to do a bunch of things. So I can stop working. I can create a pull request, which will push the branch and then pull, do the pull request, which is quite cool. Um, or I can open it in the web if I want to look at some more detail. All right, so let's start working on this. Um, hey, I Damian, make hey, man, real quick. Earlier you said, is the Zoom good enough? Uh, I thought it was, but... People are saying no. Can you zoom in oh, a, little bit, a little bit more? I can definitely <laughs> zoom in more. I'm How's sorry. That? Zoom in until right. it looks ridiculously large and then zoom in uh, one more time. <laughs> does this right. zoom work as well? Like this is going to be important. You know, yeah, if that works that. really well. Yeah, that looks great. Okay, very I'll do that a little bit more. I've zoomed in a couple okay. more things, but I'll, All right, I'll you're do good. a little bit more. Carry uh, on. Awesome. Okay, I'll start again then. Um, no, we'll keep, let's make another change. When I, um, when I first did this, I looked in my Git thing and it gave me all of the bin and obj and debug stuff um, as files that I needed to add to my repo. So obviously I needed a git ignore. And I just kind of came across this little um, command that you can do um, in .NET or from the .NET CLI, .NET new git ignore, which is awesome. It just creates a git ignore for your .NET project. So um, completely unrelated to what we're doing, but um, a little tip that I found from the ASP.NET monsters, figured I'd share that one. All right, so nav uh, black, maybe this is dark. Save that and we'll just do a little rebuild. If this doesn't work, that's fine. Somebody should pick it up in my pull request, right? Um, so let's try it again. Hey, there we go, it's dark now. I'll probably have to fix up those links, but yeah. Okay, we're good enough. So I've done that work and I'm ready now to commit my changes. Now, what changes have I got? I've got two. I've got a the CS Proj assembly uh, cache. I don't even know what that is. I'm just going to discard that. So we've got my change. Now the GitHub extension has already given me like the commit message, making the nav bar the dark fixes number two, which is quite cool. I can see the change that I've made in that working tree. Um, this is the create a pull request. It should push that branch, create a pull request. But I'm just going to do it piece by piece just to show you some of the other integrations. So let's just add that change. We'll stage that change. We'll commit that. And then I'm going to push it. Um, VS Code's great. It says there is no upstream branch. Um, it integrates with Git really well. Do you want to publish that branch? So just in case you can't read that. It says there's no, there's no issue to on GitHub. It's only on my local. So do you want to publish it? Of course. So I'm publishing that branch. And I've also got this little prompt. Hey, you just pushed a branch that was related to an issue. Um, that extension's given me this and it says, do you want to create a pull request directly from this? So I don't have to go back to github.com if I don't want to. I can just create a pull request right from there. So I'll click on that. It's giving me the little create pull request dialog, making sure that I'm going changes from my little, um, uh, yeah, so from, my, from the right place into 
the right place. So I'm going from my issue two branch into my main branch to make the navbar dark, fixes number two. I can create a draft um, PR if I want, or just create that one. So let's just create that branch. It's gone ahead, it's created that branch, and it's opened that pull request directly here. So right now I'm in exit, I'm in, sorry, I'm in review mode for this pull request, which is very cool. Um, We'll talk about that in a sec. I just want to show you what it's done in the background. So that making that navbar dark, um, that's still um, open because I haven't closed that. We've got that make that navbar dark pull request that I just created. Jump over to pull request, we can see, make the navbar dark. It's linked to that issue. And then that issue as well uh, has that change um, directly linked here. So make the navbar dark, a commit that referenced this issue. So I can go all the way back from that pull request to the issue to the change that I actually made, which is quite cool. So that's great. I've got my pull request. I can um, I can look at that pull request and, and uh, mark it as done and stuff like that. So let's just let's just merge this one because I've got another one. That I'm, all right, merge that pull request. That's fantastic. Because I exited that review mode, I'm back on my main branch now. Um, and so I can do my next piece of work. So rather than do some more work, I'm going to actually look at a pull request that somebody has assigned me. Now I'm a team of one in this little example. So this is a pull request that I've been assigned. Um, if I look at the signs to me. And so this is in that repo, that pull request, it's the update privacy policy. You can see, um, this is the change. Somebody's given me a privacy policy. That's great. That was actually written by Copilot as well. It's fantastic not having to actually write my own code um, for these demos. And you can see all of the details about that. You know, branch has no conflicts. I can merge it directly from here and I can choose how it gets merged. I can um, squash and merge, rebase and merge, um, or just do a merge commit. So that's really good as well. Um, I can just do a bunch of stuff in here. That means I don't have to go back into github.com. Um, I can also, um, so this is the little button to start review mode for that one. And so now I'm in review mode and I can leave comments. I can do my commits and things like that, or I can exit review mode. But let's say I'm completely happy with this. The other thing to note as well by clicking on that link is I entered that pull request. So I'm on the branch that that pull request belongs to. So all of this code now is that branch for the pull request that I'm reviewing. So I didn't have to go and do any command line stuff to pull that branch to, to check it out. I don't have to just browse through the changed files down in that toolbar. I've kind of got pull request, the issue that's related. I've got all of this information that we've got now about, about what's happening. All right, so let's merge that one. That's great, looks excellent. And then I can delete the branch from here as well to clean up if I really want to or exit that review mode. So now I'm back in my main branch. So this is cool. This is if you're working in that repo. I want to show you one more thing um, if you're not working in a repo. So it's quite common across especially larger organizations to have a lot of different projects across a lot of different repos. And I might not be working on that particular repository. So I don't really know the context beyond kind of um, you know, this is what the project is about. Now, if somebody asks me to review a pull request, which has happened to me before, the first thing I generally have to do is clone that repository and pull it down in its entirety. Um, and Burke, you might be familiar with this, but I know um, a lot of organizations have docs pages. And every time you want to review a pull request for, you know, somebody's made a change to a particular doc, I had to clone that whole repository, which is gigantic just to review that pull request if I really wanted the context, or I could just browse in the web to see, you know, this is the file that was changed. Okay, that looks good. Um, I kind of want that context. I want to see how that project fits together rather than just pulling in, you know, just, just looking at that file or having to clone everything. So that's another extension that I totally recommend, which is called um, wrong one, Remote Hub. So this is GitHub repositories um, and it's GitHub remote. So this is to remotely browse and edit any GitHub repo. So I don't have to clone that locally. I can browse this directly from um, VS Code, but the code also stays on GitHub. Um, let me show you what I mean. So one of the little tools that you might be familiar with or little icons is this kind of um, little icon here down the bottom, which kind of shows you where you are 
um, and it also shows you, you know, what stuff you can do. So right now I'm local. If I wanted to open a remote repository, I think I can click on here. I can either connect to a code space or a remote repository. So this is kind of the icon that gives me the context of what I'm doing. I can also use the command palette. I should really learn what that's called. The command um, in in mine, it's, in mine it's control, sorry, command shift P. I think it's control shift P on Windows. And I can open a repository um, remotely. So I can open a repository directly from GitHub. So if it was a huge one like Microsoft Docs, I could probably open it directly from here, or I can open pull requests. So if somebody has given me a pull request to review, like this one, my Octocat, I can choose that pull request, and you can see right down here, straight away, um, there we go, I'm on GitHub, so I'm browsing a remote repository. I don't actually have this cloned locally, but I can see all the files. I can see everything that's there. It's just a remote view of what's going on. The pull request, that I wanted to review, let's say it's this one, I can do exactly the same as I would have done before. So let's um, grab this pull request and review that. Exactly the same as before, except I'm remote on GitHub. The branch I'm now on is the branch for that pull request. The pull request is number 600. I have the context of everything lo like looking at it here, but I don't have to have it locally. And then all the pull request stuff, like you know, leaving comments and all that kind of stuff, is right here. I can look at that pull request itself too. So all of the details about that pull request, um, the builds and checks and stuff like that. So I can do that same work, but I'm doing it remotely. I don't have to clone. So that's quite cool. Um, yeah, so those are the main two things I wanted to show you. This um, remote repository stuff is super useful if, um, if you are contributing to open source, especially if you just want to review some pull requests or look at some issues and things like that. It's really, really handy to use these extensions to be able to do that remotely without having to, um, you know, without, without having to pull everything down and with, without having to go to github.com. You can kind of stay in Visual Studio Code, which is where you live. Um, yeah, so those are the two things that I think are super good for, um, for improving your workflow. The GitHub pull requests and issues and GitHub remote uh, repositories, which is really handy. Thank you, cool. Damien. That was that was awesome, man. Uh, I love the GitHub integration in Visual Studio Code because I just want to admit to everybody that I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> on the Git command line. I think everybody assumes that everybody else knows what they're doing, but I do not. I can do like git add dot git commit dash m and then yep. something and then git push. And then if and then if it doesn't work, git push dash f. Like that's yeah. the extent of my my git knowledge. So <laughs> my, my, I think I my favorite it. my favorite git command is rmrf, um, which is like I don't know what's happened to this repository now. I'm just gonna, re <laughs> just, I'm just gonna reclone it. Start all um, over. Start over. Yeah. Which so I've we've got a couple time. of questions here, um, but yeah. man, we have quite the global audience. So uh, a couple shout outs to uh, the chat here. We got uh, Marcos in Slovakia. Richard in Japan, Tony's in Brazil, Kimberly, 4 p.m. She must be West Coast, I'm assuming. Uh, Mohammed's in Jordan, uh, Abdian's in Indonesia. So, I mean, we got people joining us from all over, which is awesome. Yeah, First question right. for you. Yes. Does this work with GitHub Enterprise? Some of it does. Uh, some of it doesn't. So let's have a look at the, the easiest way to answer this question for me, by the way, is um, just to uh look so the github pull requests and issues um does not support github enterprise so that's your first answer um so i, Damien, would, yeah. I think we actually need to update that readme uh yeah. i think it does support it now so what i'm what okay. so sana is in the chat she's our pm and she's saying well it was it was but then it wasn't but now it ah. is again so <laughs> i think we need to okay. we need to update the readme yeah she's saying it does and okay it does sana would so, know. Yeah. All right. Can I do dev tools in this? Okay. Anyway, I was going to just delete that from my, <laughs> just my do it right there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Well, this is, this was in preview as well. I think if you, um, look over here, there's like a little preview icon. So yeah, it's um, okay if we're wrong. Yeah. It's okay if we're wrong. Right. And also if you really wanted to, here's the repository for it. Uh, so if you wanted to submit a pull request and update uh, the readme and update and the readme, you could even do it remotely anyway. 
Look at that's that. True. Everybody, everybody go get the remote repositories extension and submit a PR to fix the readme. Yeah, we'll just watch this number bump up as we're as we're <laughs> as we're sitting here. That would <laughs> yeah. be awesome. Yeah. Uh cool. yeah, good. So that's awesome. That, that's great. Uh let's see here. What else have we got here? So one person, I'm looking here because I want to get the name exactly right. Um, oh. So Jay was saying it's pretty slick. It's nice having all the tools in one window. I agree with that. Um, Julian had pointed out and said, so basically this is the GitHub interface. And I think that that does beg the question of, is this supposed to replace the GitHub interface, Damien? What's the, uh, what's the end game the, here? There's still plenty of stuff in in GitHub that you, you don't get here. So like your project management and management and stuff like that. Um, so looking at individual issues, um, it's great for that individual pull requests and all that kind of stuff, seeing what stuff's assigned to you. What this is really about is just kind of enabling that developer workflow. So as a dev, you don't want to keep jumping between the browser and your, your development environment, right? You want to stay in the tool that you're using all day. You don't want to jump back and forth. But as a PM or a product manager or a project program manager or something like that, you probably do want to look at your boards and your you know, planning tools. Um, if you're doing actions and there are extensions for actions, you might want to do that in Visual Studio Code or you might want to manage that stuff in the browser as well. What these extensions are for are things for people who are spending their time in Visual Studio. There's plenty of other stuff for GitHub um, that doesn't you know, really relate directly to your day-to-day -day dev. Those things can stay in GitHub or maybe integrate with other tools, but these ones are for the developers. Gotcha. Yeah. So sort of the best of both worlds. We we refer to that as the inner loop. Like that's just yeah. the terminology that we use here at Microsoft, outer loop. And so right. you what we would try to do is bring everything into the inner loop. So they don't have to leave, which in theory makes you more productive. Yeah. Uh, good there comment you know. here from, uh, let's see here. Uh, Abdian pointed out and said, cool, I hope the next feature can be integrated with GitLab just like this. Uh, yeah. Damien here is with GitHub, but yeah. listen, GitLab, <laughs> GitLab can build an extension too. Anybody can build an extension. So uh, if they do that, you can have that kind of functionality as well. Is there, do I dare like search? I think there is a GitLab extension. There you go. Take a look. GitLab workflow. Right there. Okay. Okay. Check those code, out. Code okay. stream, GitHub, GitLab. That's kind of cool. Yeah, very extensibility, a very high extensibility in VS Code. So, next, okay. uh, Bar Bar said, next GitHub on VS Code. How does that work? We have GitHub in VS Code, and technically, can we put VS Code in GitHub? That's it. So, yeah, so Code Spaces is pretty much just the Visual Studio Code engine running in the browser for you, so you don't need. It, in, it locally, but yeah, heaps of other advantages to using code spaces, um, including like the development environment. To get this to work, I obviously had to have .NET installed. You know, I had a bunch of other stuff that I'd needed to put in my dev environment. If you're using code spaces, you can include that in the repository so anybody who launches a code space has all that stuff set up. But that, I guess that's probably the, the you know, reverse of what we're looking at now. Yeah, I would think so. It's kind of cool. You're we're seeing both things in both places, which is a, a cool place to be. Mm. Uh, let me see. A couple of people pointing out um, Gitlens. How is this yeah. extension better than Gitlens? How is it better? I think it's just different. So the issues and PRs stuff for GitHub is really about that workflow of picking up the work, creating a pull request, and moving it forward. Git Lens, um, I haven't looked at it for a little while. Um, I'm on a relatively new machine here, but I use that mainly for uh, almost like a little shortcut for Git blame, right? So it tells you <laughs> it tells you who um, it tells you who did a piece of work. Um, why don't we just install it see if it works? Um, so this does a bunch of stuff. I've used it before. It's a fantastic extension. Uh, there we go. I believe Thanks. it is the most popular VS Code extension. The oh, last really? time I checked, it was. If it's that's not, cool. that's changed recently. Let's just close my remote workspace so that'll work. So I think I just installed GitLens. Um, and so this file now, I should get extra information here. There you go. So the last change was me three days ago, that initial commit. And uh, what else can you do? Team? Team something? Show team what actions. What does that do? Show team actions. 
Let's click on it. I'm not, I'm not scared. Start a live share session. Oh, you can start wow. live share directly from GitLens. Okay. That's very cool. Um, so yeah, it gives you a lot of this kind of stuff. Does it give you extra stuff here? Oh no, that's just the ID stuff. Damien, do you know, are there similar extensions to this um, for Visual Studio? Um, I don't know is the short answer. So okay. I'm gonna, trying to work out. Um, the way to find out would be, this is where my like previous life um, in <laughs> uh, DevRel or in Cloud Advocacy, the you know, GitHub extension for Visual Studio. Oh, let's zoom in because that's going to be readable. GitHub extension for Visual Studio. Connect, clone, create, publish. Pull requests. Open. Yeah, looks like it. Review pull requests. Yeah, there you go. So if you missed that, sorry, um, Visual Studio Marketplace. So marketplace.visualstudio.com. And then you click on Visual Studio. So by default, mine was on Visual Studio Code. Um, so that's where the extension was. But yeah, right here. So All the right. answer would be yes. Awesome. So we got time for one more. I want to get it in. Uh, George Gomez, would you say that Remote Hub, or it's it's really re Remote Repositories, right? What's the name here? Let's get that right. It's yeah, like GitHub, the, GitHub Repositories is what it's called. Yeah. So that, it's right the, there on the. Oh, yeah, right. There was a thing. GitHub Repositories. Yeah. Okay. Right. So the question yeah. is, is that comparable and or easier than the web interface for reviewing a PR? I would say, I, I think it's probably easier from my point of view. And the main reason is the way you work with your code in Visual Studio Code, if that's your you know, editor of, of choice, you have your, you know, the stuff you're browsing, you have the work that you're doing, um, and you can flick around exactly the same way as if the code were local. So if you're reviewing work that's happening, you're doing it in that same environment you used to rather than doing it you know, in a browser. So the browser is fine. You can look at where the files are and then you click into a file and now you're on a page with just that file. To get back to what the tree looks like, the directory tree looks like, you have to go back to that previous page and see it there. So I, I would much prefer doing it with that, um, with this extension than going into GitHub and doing it that way personally. Yeah, I kind of agree. I think there's sort of a diminishing returns point. Um, it's so the GitHub interface is really good for a lot of PRs. If it gets complex and you have to bounce between files, I tend to prefer doing it in Visual Studio Code because I can't, there's just too much going on in the web interface for me. But both, I think both have their, their place, whatever works best for you. Yeah, exactly right. All right, well, that is it. We're a wrap. They're going to cut us off on Learn TV. <laughs> so we're going to stop it here. Damien, thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, of course. All the cool GitHub stuff. Thank all of you for being here, chat from all over the world. It was great to be with you this evening, this morning, the middle of the night, wherever you are. We'll see you back here next week for the next VS Code live stream. Remember to check us out at code.visualstudio.com slash live stream. We keep our schedule there. We got a lot of cool stuff coming up for you, but you're gonna have to check it out there to find out what it is. Thanks again, Damien. Thank you. All right, enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, Bye, everybody. You